Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video, we will discuss lead code question 567 that says permutation in string. So here we are given two string S1 and S2 and we need to return true if S2 contains a permutation of S1 otherwise false. That means a sub so these lines S2 contains permutation of S1 means that any substring of S2 must contain the permutation of S1. Okay. So yeah, it's written like uh, if one of the S1 permutation is the substring of S2. Okay. So let's take a look at the example for better understanding. So here we have a b in S1 and this is S2. So as you can see here that this is one substring that contains the permutation of S1. So in simple words, words permutation means any arrangement of a given string, right? Uh, so here it, 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 its arrangement can be a, so yeah, that's it that is present here. So yes, we written true. Now here uh, in this string, there is no word ba, right? This is boa. So here this substring can't be considered because this is uh, a permutation of a, b, o, not a, b because there is no, uh, the a, b characters are not um, adjacent, right? So there is no permutation of this string s1 in this given string. So we return false. Okay. So for a, a bit, let me explain you this with a simple example. Let's say if we have s1 equal to a, b, c, s2 equal to uh, x, y, z, c, a, b, p, q, r. So this is a, b, c and here as you can see here this c, a, b, this can be arranged to get a, b, c, right? You can get a, b, c, okay? So this is why the, this is known as permutation like arrangement of the characters of S1. So in a substring of S2, there is arrangement or permutation of characters of S1. So if it is there, then what we will do, we will simply return true. Now let's say we have the same uh, S1 and then let's say S2 is equal to x, y, z, c, a, p, b, q, r, okay? So now if you check all the three characters, means see there are three characters in S1. So uh, a substring of size 3 we need to check in S2. Okay. So let's say this is the first substring of size 3. It is, uh, this is the permutation? No. Then the, this is the second substring. This is the third substring. This is the fourth substring. This is the fifth. This is the sixth. And this is the seventh substring, right? In the in any of the substring, there is the nowhere that we can get the permutation of string S1. So thus we return false here. So I hope you guys understood the question. Uh, now based on this, what do you understood? That we are checking a substring in S2 of size S1. So what we are doing? Checking uh, substring SUBS substring of S2 of size S1 of size S1 dot size. Correct? We are simply doing this. Okay. So if you, uh, so uh, the approach what uh, here would be pretty much simple, right? Uh, for each substring, check if uh, this, uh, for each letter, let's say from starting from this letter, check a uh, substring of size S1 dot size, that means still here and check, uh, check the frequency of the characters, got it? Then for this letter, starting from this till this, check uh, if uh, the frequency of uh, all these three characters matches with these characters, correct? So yeah, this is one point. The second thing for each, um, uh, substring we need to check frequency okay so i hope you guys understood the approach that uh, for each um, uh, so we need to check for each substring and secondly what what we need to check we need to check frequency okay so yeah, that is one approach uh, to solve this question that uh, by by traversing this complete string and formatting uh, means and checking for each substring what else you can do see uh, you have some S2 like this, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, P, Q, R, and uh, S1 is A, B, C, and S2 is like this. See, what you can do is calculate, uh, means store the frequency of the first, uh, see, this is of size 3. So yeah, if cal uh, store the frequency of first three letters uh, in some, let's say, this is a frequency 1 and this is frequency 2. So store in frequency 2, okay? Now compare. F1 and F2. If they are both, if they both are same, then return true. If they both are not same, right? Then uh, what we need to do? We need to simply do F2 minus X means my frequency of X. We need to reduce, and we need to take this window that F2 uh, plus A. Got it? So yeah, this is how we uh, what we are doing here. This is sliding window, right? We are just sliding this window. Then check why is that A for these three characters with the frequency of F1. If not that, then again move ahead. How Z A B? So minus Z plus B. So I hope you guys understood that how 
uh, we are forming different substring with the help of sliding window, right? So yeah, this is our second approach. The first approach would be this uh, checking for each character and the second approach would be sliding window. Both these approach are almost similar because we are checking only the frequency. But the difference is the difference of how we are creating a substring, right? Here for by traversing each character and there we are taking a substring of size of s1 dot size. Here uh, we are only traversing once for s1 dot size. Then for the remaining characters, we remove the first character at the next character, right? Remove the first at the next character. So this is how the sliding window works, right? So I hope you guys understood this. So this is uh, so uh, how we, uh, till the end we will do like um, uh, then uh, what minus z plus uh, b. So uh, till the end uh, we will do this. So yeah, that's how this works. Uh, so uh, just a thing to correct here is it would be minus y and plus b and minus z plus c. Y was the second character. So yeah. When you will do plus C, then what we have in the current substring? C, B, A, and A, and you will get answer. Okay. So yeah, this is how the sliding window will work. So now let's move on to the coding part where I will show you both the approaches. So you're talking about the, the first approach. Let me show you. So this is the first approach. Let's quickly go through this. See, so this is a function that is common in both to match the frequencies, right? And here, what are we are doing? For each J of the S2, uh, we are just in uh, adding the, all the letters of S1 dot size for each character, right? So we are simply doing this, okay? So now let's talk about uh, the sliding window approach. So for the sliding window approach, what uh, we will do? We will simply create two frequency map of size 26. Let me do that. Uh, but before everything else, if s1 dot size is greater than s2 dot size, then in this case we will simply return false, because uh, if uh, because that is not possible that any substring would contains the permutation of s1 because the size of s1 is uh, greater. Yeah. Now let us take uh, two frequency of size 26 because there are the 26 characters only. So uh, Taking it of a fixed size is more beneficial. Yes, now for now we will store all the S1 uh, size characters in both the frequencies. Means we will initialize this uh, with all uh, X characters that are the characters of S1. I is less than S1 dot size. I plus plus frequency 1 of S1 of I minus A plus plus. And the same thing we would do with the frequency 2 of s2 of i minus a plus plus now for the remaining characters we will run a sliding window right for int i equals to 0 i is less than s2 dot size minus s1 dot size and i plus plus see we have to do s2 dot size minus s1 dot size because let's say this is the window this is the window so in the end this would be our window right s2 dot size minus s1 dot size because beyond that we won't get all the characters of means we won't get um, a substring of a size s1 dot size right so that's why we are uh, taking up till here then we will call if um, is match function and we will pass both the frequency array frequency 1 and frequency 2 and if this returns true we will simply return true because we got our answer right and if this is not the case then what we would do we would update this frequency error. How? By removing the first character and adding the next character, right? S2 of i uh, minus a minus minus. This is what we did to remove us, uh, the first character and we add the next character. That is what? That is i plus s1 dot size, right? Minus a plus plus and here it would be plus plus. Yeah, and in the end for the last print also, we will call this function is match and we would pass frequency 1 and frequency 2. So yeah, that's uh, for the code side. Now the only thing remaining is to call this uh, is match function. We would take uh, two vectors uh, f1 and f2. F2. 
and also let me uh, make it as m n person here so that we don't use up the space. And yeah, for this both the frequency are of the fixed size 26. So let's just travel for the 26 characters. And we would match that if uh, f1 of i not equal to f2 of i, then simply written false. If any of the frequency uh, doesn't match, then simply written false. And in the else condition, and uh, if everything is correct, then in the end we will return true. So yeah, that's all from the code side. Now let me try to run this. So the test cases are passed. Now let me try to submit this. Okay, yeah. So our code got accepted. Uh, so I hope you guys understood uh, both the approaches uh, as well as the coding part. Now uh, talking about the time and space complexity. So the time complexity is, as you can see guys here, that here we are running this loop for s1 dot size. And this loop uh, is running for s2 dot size minus s1 dot size. And internally we are matching 26 characters. We are running 26 times, right? Because this is this runs 26 times. So let me uh, try to write down the time complexity. Let's say the s1 is of length l1, s2 is of length l2. Then time complexity is somewhere l uh, big O of l1 plus 26 times of so this is 26 times of l2 minus l1, right? This is simply what we are doing. This is this runs for l1 times. And this runs for L2 minus L1 times, but how many, how much? It runs for 26 times, so 26 into L2 minus L1. And the space complexity is big O of 1. Why big O of 1? Because both these frequency vectors or frequency are of fixed size, fixed size 26. Thus, we can say that space complexity is big O of 1. Okay, so yeah, that's all for the time complexity and space complexity. So yeah, if you guys have any doubts still, then let me know in the comment section. Uh, and make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, also, one thing to note here is that I am posting the opportunity or the, the means the job opportunities in the community section. So make sure you check that out um, and do subscribe to uh, my channel. It helps uh, me to get motivated to and to make videos like this. So yeah, that's all from my side. Make sure you hit the like button. Thank you.